Hi, I'm Scott with BibleStudying.net, and in the study we're talking about the, the existence of God and, and how our current scientific understanding and rational analysis uh, being informed will lead us to the conclusion that God exists. And so we sort of covered the basics. We took a look at some basic uh, scientific principles um, and, and, and definitions in our, in our previous segment. And just to recover those briefly, we looked at how the scientific method attempts to understand uh, the phenomena that we, that we view around us or we experience around us in the universe um, through uh, observing those things, making hypotheses about them, and then testing them further. And when we make hypotheses, we've learned that through Occam's razor, we have to make the simplest assumptions possible in terms of only assuming things about the phenomena that are necessary to explain the phenomena. We can't throw extra uh, assumptions in there. We just need to keep it simple to what is basically needed to explain something. Um, we also look at the importance of cause and effect in science. That science looks to explain the phenomena in terms of causes and effects. And that the universe is uh, all matter and energy. It's a, a series of phenomena and of events um, that can be viewed as a whole system. And that cosmology is the science of studying that system and its origin. And so, very scientific uh, uh, endeavor that we're involved in as we take a look at this issue. So the first thing that we're going to point out from science is that our current scientific, scientific understanding is that the universe had a beginning. Um, their science rejects, our scientific knowledge today rejects the idea that the universe itself uh, it is eternal or always existed or didn't have a beginning. And so <clears throat> there had been a, a theory called the steady state theory that existed in the 20th century. It was uh, part of what was a discussion that was occurring on the universe, and the steady state theory actually held that the universe itself was eternal or didn't have a beginning. The steady state theory, though, has been rejected uh, almost universally by um, the Big Bang Theory, as everybody pretty much knows. So let's just read some quotes on this. The Columbia Encyclopedia says, The steady state theory holds that the universe has been in existence for all time. Encyclopedia Britannica says, A steady state universe has no beginning. Uh, Columbia Encyclopedia says, The steady state theory is now of historical interest only. Uh, and then what World Encyclopedia says, steady state theory, uh, most cosmologists now reject the theory. And then Encyclopedia of Science and Religion says the, the theory, uh, the steady state theory was largely abandoned uh, in 1965. What was it, why was it abandoned? Uh, in part, one of the reasons it was abandoned is because what we observe about the universe tells us that the universe isn't eternal, it had a beginning. And so what we've accepted, uh, what the scientific community and, and scientific knowledge accepts today, is that the universe is the Big Bang Theory of the universe, and the Big Bang Theory holds that the universe isn't eternal, that it had a beginning, and this is the, the universal, almost universally accepted scientific view. We're going to go with that. The Big Bang Theory, this is from the Dictionary of Astronomy, the most widely accepted theory of the origin and evolution of the universe. Columbia Encyclopedia says, according to Big Bang Theories, at the beginning of time, all of the matter and energy in the universe exploded. This Big Bang is dated between, between 10 and 20 million years ago. Columbia Encyclopedia, the age of the universe, according to the Big Bang theory favored by many scientists, the universe is between 8 and 13 billion years old. Uh, the American Heritage Dictionary of the English Language, Big Bang Theory, a cosmological theory holding the universe, originated approximately 20 billion years ago. And then lastly, from Britannica, talks about and I'm not going to read this quote. Uh, you can get it, uh, you can find it yourself. It's from Encyclopedia Britannica under their article, Expanding Universe. And it just talks about the various um, scientists in the 20th century and observations dealing with redshift and expansion of the universe uh, and, and receding of galaxies and stars that, that, that have supported and proven the universe, that the universe had a beginning and, and demonstrated the Big Bang model and why it's been accepted so widely. And so we can go ahead and, and uh, be, we can see that sci the scientific view is that the universe had a, be uh, had a beginning. Another scientific uh, principle that deals with this, that our observation that we've made, deals, is the second law of thermodynamics um, in which uh, we can make observations about the universe which confirm that the universe had a beginning. And, and basically what we're going to be dealing with when we deal with the second law of thermodynamics is a, a process called entropy. Um, and so let me go ahead and have this uh, def define this for us. Microsoft and Carter says uh, the process whereby energy loses its capacity to do work is called entropy. World Book says of thermodynamics, according to the second law, until a system reaches its maximum entropy, it can do useful work. But as a system does work, its entropy increases until the system can no longer perform work. 
uh, again from Microsoft and Carter says under physics uh, and the second law of thermodynamics, the entropy of an isolated system and of the universe as a whole can increase, and when equilibrium is eventually reached, no more internal change of any form is possible. Uh, and then lastly from Britannica, it says, under physics, it says, finally, uh, the system reaches the state of maximum entropy in which none of the stage energy may be usefully employed when applied to the universe as a whole, which is considered as an isolated system. This has been called, the, uh, been called heat death. And so as the universe goes ages, energy becomes less and less available for change, for reactions, for work to be done. And so when we look at the universe around us, we see that energy is still available, and, and, and reactions and changes are still happening, and work is still being done. Uh, if the universe were eternally old, or infinitely old, let's say, uh, the energy would have been used up a long time ago, but it's still available today. So that tells us that the universe had a beginning a finite amount of time ago, and that, of course, is uh, consistent with other aspects and observations that, are, that have been used to prove the Big Bang Theory. So when we get to the conclusion here, the conclusion is that the universe did have a beginning. Uh, it would be unscientific to suppose that, that uh, the universe didn't have a beginning or that it's eternal. That would be inconsistent with what we've, uh, we've currently, what our current findings in science. So we're going to go with that conclusion. The universe had a beginning. So this, this fact brings up some additional uh, secondary questions. Since the universe had a beginning, the universe also must have had a cause. So it would be contrary to logic to assume that, uh, that uh, the universe didn't have a cause. So to suggest that something uh, exists which either caused itself or had no cause is contrary to uh, working logic. Um, it would, if something existed without a cause or brought itself into existence, this would require that the, the thing in question performed an action at a time when it didn't exist, and that action would be bringing itself into existence. Things that don't exist can't perform actions. We see that scientifically. It's very sound logically. The same is true with what we might call, uh, or similar to, cyclical or circular causation, in which um, you may say you can only get A if you have B, and you can only get B if you have A. Well, if you don't have A or B, you will never get A or B. That's how cyclical causation works, and it doesn't work logically. From a scientific point of view, um, we, we can also determine that the universe must have had a cause. When we look and observe and experience things in the universe all around us, all we, all we ever empirically or personally have seen is that what we are experiencing, all these events, phenomena that we know, have causes. So when we look at it all around us, all we see is a series of events with causes, effects with causes. Um, when we look at the universe as a whole, the universe as a whole is simply a set of events or effects or phenomena with causes. So when we look at it as a set, we should apply, according to Occam's razor, um, that, that we, have to take, we have to explain what we see in terms of what is already known. What we know is that the universe is nothing more than a giant set of events or effects with causes. So what about the universe as a set? As a, as a phenomenon itself. Scientifically, let's explain it in terms of what we already know. It must have had a cause. So that's a very scientific uh, conclusion to take there. And so um, we're going to go ahead and go with the conclusion. The universe had a beginning, that's science. Uh, the universe must have had a cause also, very logical, very scientific. And so you can ask yourself the question, if you want to assume that the universe didn't have a cause or that it caused itself, what's your scientific basis for that? There isn't one. No one's ever observed, observed such a thing. It doesn't work logically. It doesn't make sense logically. And, and so you're on very shaky ground there. What would be the motivation for accepting that idea that the universe didn't, didn't have a cause or caused itself? Um, I would argue that uh, it, it certainly isn't uh, based on scientific or empirical observation or what seems to make sense logically, rationally. It must be, pro it must be wishful thinking or some, uh, maybe perhaps some aversion to what this may lead to, which would be potentially the existence of God. So um, we'll go ahead and, and break off there with after these uh, first two points, and we'll pick up with our third point in investigating uh, some more information, what we can deduce about the cause of the universe itself. Now that we know the universe had a beginning, and we can assume that the universe, scientifically speaking, must have had a cause, we'll look at a second uh, with some more information about the cause of the universe.